Ooh, what's up, Internet? Claris is playing with her hair, just like every intro. My name's David Webb. I'm Arielle Edwards. We get nerdy nightly. And we thought we'd share it with you. That is right. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of the Nightly Morning Show here from the Nerdy Nightly Couch. Uh, sorry to call you out like that. Yeah, how dare. I just noticed, like, there's a lot of times where I'm uploading this video to YouTube. Uh, this video does go up on YouTube and the audio gets released on our podcast feed. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of times where I click into the show screen and you're going... Yeah. As if you're, like, unaware of the fact that we're starting the show. No, I just, like, try to, like, squeeze it in last minute. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, it's fine. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it works. Sometimes. <laughs> um... Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> Y'all, it is very close to the end of the year. We have three more days. Um, yeah, right? Yeah. Wild. Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday, mm -hmm. Thursday, mm -hmm. and then it is 2021. Uh, I feel like everyone has been waiting for this year to end. Yep. And it is almost here. Very excited for some content we're putting out in the next few days. We've got some top fives of the year coming out, uh, as well as uh, on, on the first, we're going to put out a look forward at things we're excited for in 2021. So I hope mm -hmm. that you are excited for and ready for all of that lovely goodness. That'll mostly be on the YouTube page, but we do have a special, we have, we have a special premiere this week. Uh, the uh, one final gift from us to you at the end of 2020, do you want to, mm -hmm. what is that, Clarus? Um, we uh, are finally bringing you the first episode of Catching Up Clarus. Catching Up Clarus, get the title right. Catching Up Clarus. Catching Up Clarus. <laughs> nope, that's not. That's incorrect. That will be uh, live on our podcast feed on Wednesday this week. Uh, that's tomorrow. Uh, we yeah. spent the first episode talking about Avatar The Last Airbender. It's a spoiler-filled podcast about the entire uh, three seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, it mostly talks about one chunk of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it is going to be us talking about uh, Avatar. Uh, and then that is going to be a bi-weekly podcast that we do from now on, mm -hmm. although it might be a few weeks before the next episode. Um, but that will be twice a month. We'll be doing one episode about a TV show mm -hmm. and one episode about a movie. Uh, yeah. And that is available anywhere you download podcasts. That'll be on the Nerdy Nightly podcast feed. You can listen to that on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, iHeartRadio. The, the, there's so many. There's so many. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's so, there's there's so many list. places to listen to podcasts. Um, and of course, follow our social medias. We will post links to make it easier for you to find it. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we are living in um, a post-cyberpunk addiction world for David. My, my addiction to cyberpunk has moved on. I'm so proud of you. And, um... Has been replaced. You know what? I did try and download it on my Razer Blade um, laptop. Yeah. Cyberpunk? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. There's no way. Like, that game is massive. There is yeah. literally no way. I thought it might work. Um, I got... I, I was getting, like, 17 to 20 frames per second on um, the lowest mode, uh, graphics-wise. Jeez. Um, so, uh, if I want to play any more Cyberpunk, it's going to be on our, our, our desktop PC. Well, and it's, it's interesting, because, like, what does the laptop have? A 1060? I have no idea. I actually don't know. Weird. Yeah, I thought it might be able to. It did. It was able to run... I played all of Assassin's Creed Odyssey on it, so I thought maybe it would be there, but it just isn't. No. It, the game is The game just breaks my laptop. Um, just cause it's, it's a laptop. Like it's, it's, it's not even a particularly large laptop. It's no. a 13 inch laptop. Yeah. Um, but my new gaming addiction, and I think your new gaming addiction is Hades. Mm -hmm. The IGN and Kotaku both made Hades their game of the year. I think Polygon also made it game of the year. Mm -hmm. Um, actually I don't know if Kotaku did. IGN and Polygon for sure did. Yeah. Um, and I can see why. Yeah. Uh, it is really impressive how fully realize the world is and how consistent all the design elements are yes um i know you're you're a bit behind me in the game and you haven't met as many people so yeah i started playing it for the first time yesterday put about five hours into it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um it's a beautiful game yeah and yeah. i'm not and gonna funny. lie oh yeah very it's funny like everyone everyone is such a character um, mm -hmm. but also kind of feels real, you know, in the way that the Greek gods kind of do. Yeah. Um, and I, <laughs> it's funny. I thought I wasn't going to like it 
Mm-hmm. The first five minutes, I was like, oh my god, there's Where's no tutorial. Where's their tutorial? I was like, what the hell? I was like, how like, the game, hell? Babe, babe, the game is a tutorial. Just just, just keep yeah, trying. Yeah, I was like, what is happening? Um, I'm glad I'm glad that I didn't mm-hmm. make a, a snap judgment, because the game is really fantastic. Yeah, I love even Hades. Like, you would expect Hades to be kind of like the like boring, like grumpy boss, but he's so sassy. Yeah. <laughs> when he shoots you down. Like, he is... They allow everyone to be so mean to your character Zagreus in a way that is so like, it's just so mean spirited, but because these are all fictional characters and like whatever, it's mm-hmm. really funny. Yeah. And I just, I'm really, I'm really into it. I'm, I'm so excited to play it again today on stream. It's, it's honestly, I get why it's on a lot of people's best games of the year. And the more I play it, the more it inches up my list. I know. It's all I want to do. I'm, I'm like... so, I'm so glad that I was like, no, I'm going to push through to play this before the end of the year. Because, mm-hmm. like, if I didn't have this on my top five list at the end of this year, I would be like, David, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. David, come on, what are you doing? Yeah, how dare. The other game I didn't play this year that I feel like I'm, 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 I might be missing is Animal Crossing New Horizons. Yes, you're right. We did not. We never we picked it up. It. And yeah. now it's like this winter update comes out and everyone's back in Animal Crossing with their islands. And I'm, I got some FOMO. I'm sorry. I got a case of the FOMO. I've never played Animal Crossing. I've played one of them. Like, I don't really know what it is. It's basically you have an island and you do chores. And then you, like, in doing chores, you, like, you, like, get money because you have, like, a job. And then you take that money and you, like, renovate your house. It's like life, but if life was super cute. So it's kind of like... A building sim? N- no, no, it's it's like f- it's like Farmville on Facebook. If Farmville was amazing, <laughs> okay. And your aunt couldn't be a part of it. <laughs> not you, Sandra. Of, of course. <laughs> not you, Sa- not you, <laughs> aunt um, who's watching the show the, right the, now. <laughs> the, the the general idea. <laughs> well done. Well done, babe. Well, you know, you Farmville like Farmville got uh, Farmville killed themselves oh. by making Farmville was great until you got ninety thousand notifications about it. Oh yeah, my my aunt Susan actually. Wow. Like, oh wow, you named out. her. Calling out. Oh wow. Calling out. <laughs> we're gonna get letters. The only notifications I would ever get were like Farmville gifts, and I was like, oh, yeah, stop yeah. it. <laughs> but yeah, Farmville Farmville like killed their own thing. By mm-hmm. making it, by making Farmville annoying. Yeah. And. Yes, yes, they did. Like, that was the worst part of that game. And I loved, like, this is going to sound so dumb, but, like, I really enjoyed Farmville on Facebook. No, like, it was, it was fun. But, like, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, the chat. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, no. It's fine. Susan she's, called she's, out. She's not watching, so it's fine. That's fair. That's <laughs> fair. Uh, y'all, should we get into the news? Let's do it. All right. I did not expect to talk about Farmville today. Um, Me neither. Is, I wonder if that's still a thing. I'm sure it's, it's still a plugin. It's still a thing, yeah. Are there still games on Facebook? I actually don't know. I don't go on Facebook ever. Yeah, there um, are. All right, y'all. Uh, Warner Brothers. Uh, I know the, the main story on the Twitch uh, stream is that Nintendo turned down Kanye, and we are going to talk about that story. But first, we have to talk about the actual bigger story that I didn't... I, that I'd forgotten about, <laughs> if I'm going to be straight up honest. Also, I saw Kanye, and I got excited. Um, okay. Warner Brothers has been talking about adjusting their DC movie strategy. They are talking, they are talking about moving up to six movies a year. Six movies a year from DC, four of which would be theatrically, uh, theatrically released, or, you know, this new hybrid theatrical and HBO Max model, and the other two would be straight to HBO Max movies. Okay. Um, this is, uh, this is a insane strategy. <laughs> yeah. It makes literally no sense. Mostly because y- y'all... I think Warner Brothers is drunk. I, I, War- Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers, you cannot be like, we're going to put all of our movies on HBO Max on day one, but also have them in theaters. But we're also going to have movies that are only on HBO Max. Why? What is the purpose what are, what is the purpose of having movies on HBO Max that are in theaters and having movies on HBO Max that aren't? Just put them in theaters also. You're, you make the money. Like, it doesn't matter. I am, like, confused. 
And and maybe this is maybe they're saying this because their plan is genuinely in 2022 to go back to the live theater model, maybe. But like the idea that some of your movies would be in theaters and some of them wouldn't and the ones that wouldn't. This is why I wanted to talk about this story, because Warner Brothers is pissing me off today by saying that Static Shock would be an HBO Max movie and wouldn't go to theaters because it's risky. Risky? Yeah. Batgirl and Static Shock are riskier DC movies. Why riskier? What does that mean? Well, here's the thing. Static Shock is not technically a DC character. He's a milestone character. And okay. he is an incredible character who absolutely should have his own movie. Have you seen the Static Shock animated show? It's perfection. It's one of the best. I, I, Static Shock is so cool. He's the best. And the fact that you're telling me that Static Shock can't carry... Did you think the Guardians of the Galaxy were household names before the movie came out? No, they just made a really good movie. Here's my problem with this. Okay, okay? but you're trusting DC to make a really good movie. They've made some really good movies. They have. Shazam? Uh, Shazam is not a very well-known character. It's a really good movie. Mm -hmm. And so people love it because the movie's good. Not because people knew Shazam before. I knew Shazam before, sure. And like bunch of nerds like me. And yes, I did know Guardians of the Galaxy before Guardians of the Galaxy came out. But, but it was a different Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. This is what pisses me off about this. Warner Brothers is saying that it is only worth putting their characters in theaters if the IP is already strong. They, are, they haven't even made the movie yet. And they're making yeah. that call based on w whether or not people know the name of the character. And that's not how you do this. <laughs> Make good movies. Yeah. And I just, I can't. We, Maybe you're asking too much of them. I can't. Like, <sighs> Warner Brothers has not yet put out a slate of like three good movies in a year. They haven't no. even put out three movies in a year. And now no. they want to go to six, six all of a sudden? Like... Like, uh, um, ah, no. Mm -mm. The Not other part, happen. the other part of this that's wild to me is they're saying um, uh, Walter Hamada. Who look, I love Walter Hamada. He's a great exec. Look, I, th none of this is directed at you, dude. You're you're super awesome. Um, and I love I love everyone on the DC side of this. I think this is mostly a Warner Brothers thing that I have a problem with. But mm -hmm. um, well, Walter Hamada is also quoted as saying, "With every movie that we're looking at now, we are thinking, what's the potential max spinoff?" Um, so now they want to make HBO Max television show spinoffs for all of their movies, right? Peacemaker is going to be a television spinoff of the new Suicide Squad movie. The Batman movie with Robert Pattinson is getting an HBO Max spinoff starring uh, the Commissioner Gordon from that world. Um, and it'll be about the GCPD. Um, and so it looks like the goal, DC's goal here is to create HBO Max spinoffs of... The movies. Of the movies. Yeah. But... But, like, are, so are we going to get six television shows a year as well? Like, DC... D hmm. We just watched Wonder Woman 84, and this is not a spoiler for Wonder Woman 84. But I will say that Wonder Woman 84 directly rebukes the idea that there is any sort of canon in these DC films. Yes. The consistency is not there. And it so... It takes place in 1984, and yet <laughs> Justice League happens... 2010? I think. Ish. Oh, ish. <clears throat> and the continuity is not there at all. So here's the thing. If you're going to make six movies a year that are vaguely connected, it's going to be messy. It's yeah. going to be very messy. Yeah. It, it is going to be like you took the entire Fox X-Men universe and compiled that down into two years of films. And that's going to be a lot. It's just, it's going to be a lot. That sounds like a nightmare. And Static Shock should absolutely be a big tentpole franchise for you. He's so cool and you need a black superhero <laughs> so badly. Because yes. I don't know if Ray Fisher is going to come back as Cyborg. So for the love of God, <laughs> make one movie with black people in it. Yeah. I shouldn't be laughing, but like... It's just so ridiculous. Like, what are, <laughs> like, literally, like, who is drunk and can we please sober them up? Well, and, and here's the problem, right? You literally, like, HBO, Warner Brothers literally has their highest profile black superhero mm -hmm. in Cyborg right now. Yeah. Complaining that there is, like, a racial bias issue within Warner Brothers. And the reports that are coming out are that Warner Brothers is saying that Static Shock is a riskier project. And it's like, it's not a good what look. What does that mean? Yeah, that looks bad. It means they you. don't think it's going to make money. Yeah. Despite the fact that Static Shock is beloved, people would... The Static Shock animated a, show... If they made a movie like Black Panther, they would crush it. 
But here's the thing. It's not even like Black Panther, though. The Black Panther... Black I mean, Panther's like, quality. Great. Like, if, if they actually tried... And oh, like, yeah, yeah. you know, made a good movie. It's not riskier. Like Yeah, the thing about the thing about Sex Shock is that it is the story of like a real like it, it's 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 a more it's an even more relatable story than Black Panther. It is a story of like a kid in like an inner city mm-hmm. dealing with like being a a black youth who happens to be a superhero. And th- the idea that that story is not is is not like a big temple franchise to me right right now with where the world is at is yeah. insane. Yeah. And it just tells me like and the the idea that Batgirl, you don't think Bat you think Batgirl is a risky project? Batgirl? Like w- <laughs> who is more recognizable? Yeah, Batman and Superman, sure, but like I would argue that Batgirl is more well known than Aquaman. <laughs> like uh, how yeah. is that <laughs> how is that a risky project for DC to make? Batgirl's been around for, like, 60 years. Yeah. Everybody knows who she is. Yeah, that's true. And she's dope. And for the love of God, DC, you could use, you could use, you could use some diversity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just a little bit of diversity. Just a little bit, thank you. Because otherwise, like, if, okay, if Static Shock is going to be an HBO Max project and Batgirl's being, being an HBO Max project, what are your theatrical releases? Yeah. You're not making Superman 2 for some reason. They were like, Batman v Superman. And we were like, oh god, why? Like... <laughs> Here's the... Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, the first this first Superman movie I, I, I liked. That's one of the DC movies that I'm like, oh, I, I liked that. That, that um, was good. Uh, Rockmage says they need to treat Static like Spider-Man show is real life issues. That is the... Yeah. That's it. Static Shock is your Spider-Man, DC. Yeah. He is. I, I will die on that hill. It's DC sometimes struggles because mm-hmm. DC characters are pan- pantheonic gods among mortals, right? And that is just that that's what the Justice League is. They are so beyond human. Whereas the Avengers have always been more human. And in comic books, DC was always winning because of that, except for Spider-Man mm-hmm. um, and Wolverine. But in the movies, what's happened is that the pantheonic god story is so much harder to tell in a film. It's hard to make, to make relatable. Mm-hmm. And what Marvel has done is it's taken its more like real life heroes mm-hmm. and made these relatable stories that are, are larger than life and whatnot, but we feel connected to and we care about the people. Mm-hmm. DC has characters that can do that. They have characters that can tell those stories. Barbara Gordon is one of them. And mm-hmm. Static Shock is another. Uh, Barbara Gordon's back for those of you who don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and the, the idea that those are the characters that are risky to me is insane. Yeah. Because those are the characters that people give a crap about. If you make a good Batgirl movie, you'll make a billion dollars. If you make a good Static Shock movie, you might make two billion dollars. Yeah, like the potential is there and it's just wild to me that oh. Warner Brothers is not looking at it like that. Like, like I don't really mm-hmm. understand where their mind is at. I, uh-huh. Like, it feels like they are just so detached from reality in this moment. <clears throat> like, with their going straight to HBO Max, and now this, yeah. we're going to put out six movies a year. Like, because there's a lot of bad DCU movies. Well, and you've got to look, like, look at this year, right? Like, Birds of Prey is a much, is a much more difficult sell than Static Shock to me. I know Margot Robbie was in it, but, like, Birds of Prey, if Margot Robbie was in it, it didn't make money. It should have. That movie's brilliant. Yes. That movie's... It should have. That movie might be my favorite DC Universe movie. Um, Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, I would say so. But it didn't make money because... I don't know why, actually, to be completely honest. I think it might have just been marketing and the beginning of the coronavirus. It was, yeah, right at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, But the... The, the idea that, like, Batgirl is riskier than Birds of Prey is so bizarre to me. Especially yeah. since Barbara Gordon is literally the cornerstone of Birds of Prey. Um, you literally made a movie about Bar- B- B- uh, that should have had Barbara Gordon in it and you took her out. Don't know why. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I just, very, I'm, I'm confused very confused by, by it. Yeah. Um, and don't understand. The idea that you're going to ramp up to six movies all of a sudden. How? Like, how? how? Like, where? Yeah. What? Where did all this money appear from? AT&T. AT&T. Yeah, I <laughs> it's, guess so. It's because they're owned by AT&T. I guess so. I, look, here's the thing. I want six movies a year. I want... I, I, I want good movies first. I mean, like, I, I don't know. I, 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 will, I will take four good movies and two bad ones, if that's what it takes. But the... 
the thing the the thing that I want is for I, I just I just want more characters to get a better spotlight in DC, mm-hmm. and I want uh, like half of those characters to be women and people of color. Yeah, or it's, female it's, people of color. That would be great too. That would be awesome. That would be yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I'd be down for that. It's just like <laughs> it's just tough. Especially in the wake of everything that has gone on with the Ray Fisher stuff. Yeah. It's tough to me that it there is, like, no plan moving forward to have a lead be anything other than a white man that I can see. Like, yeah. other than Wonder Woman, I, like, uh, we have The Flash, which is a white dude. Yeah. We have The Batman, which is a white dude. We have, um... Superman. Well, Superman's not even getting a movie. Like, yeah. what are the other movies that are coming out? We have The Flash and Batman are the only ones we know about. Mm-hmm. Maybe we get a uh, Suicide Squad has is is diverse and but su- I, but that's James Gunn. Like, I trust him to actually yeah. you know do this. Um, but like, where where like C- Cyborg's basically been canceled. Mm-hmm. I I just I I wonder what their plan is moving forward because you're not gonna keep making the white man superhero universe. Mm-hmm. And get away with it nowadays. And and yeah. honestly, some of people want people want different stories. Yeah. And yeah, we need more perspective. Um, uh, misguided gamers live says, isn't Green Lantern getting a show yet? Uh, Green Lantern is getting a show on Hardcore Soft Popcorn. Thank you for following. Thank you. Green Lantern is getting a show on HBO Max that will actually have a lot of diversity in it. Mm-hmm. Um, because uh, they've announced that John Stewart is going to be one of the Green Lanterns in that, and he's African American. Uh, we're also going to get Simon Baz, mm-hmm. who was, um, I believe, Muslim. Uh, I believe he was the first Muslim Green Lantern. Uh, and then there's a, um, a Latina... Oh, why can I not remember? Why can I not remember her name? Jessica Cruz, I think? Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Rich Simmons this head says, John Stewart, The Daily Show. Not that John Stewart. Although I would love to see him as a Green Lantern. That would be hilarious. That would be something. Um, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I just... And look, I'm not saying that, like... I'm not saying that, like, you have to have a quota or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. But, like, we're at a point now where if you're going to make... If you're going to do this, and you're going to make all these movies, you, you got to understand that you're making movies for a different time period than these comics came out in. Mm-hmm. And your movies need to reflect that. Yeah. And it's noticeable... It's noticeable. Yeah. And I don't know. Yeah, it sticks out. And it's, yeah, it's, it's like, it's not going to cut it for much longer, you know? Like, people are not going to be happy. And I, I think that, yeah, I think that they're going to have to do some rethinking and restructuring. Especially if they want to pull this off. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm very confused by this announcement. <laughs> Yeah, and look, maybe it ends up being great. And 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 like there 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 is room. There are enough characters in the DC canon that you could pull this off. You have you have enough room to tell six movies a year. But here's the thing: they can't even keep the continuity straight with the with the characters they have. But they don't care to. You know what I mean? Like they clearly don't care. I guess. Wonder Woman can fly in 1984, but she can't in 2020, and they don't care. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that's not. DC's not interested in that con- continuity. I guess. It's just like, uh, that makes it so much more difficult for people who are trying to get into your content. And like, moving forward, like, I, how are we even going to know? Once once the Snyder television show comes out, how are we even going to know what the sequels are a sequel to? You know what I mean? Like, the sequels but like, are le- a sequel to. But legitimately, me. like, they're going to be two different movies, and they're go- like they're going to have different elements to them. And when we get a sequel to Justice League, you know, Flashpoint, when Flashpoint comes out, what is, which Justice League is it a sequel to? You know what I mean? And if I don't, if, if I, I don't, I mean, granted, it's not out yet. So like, maybe we will know, but like, I have a feeling I might go into the movie knowing, but people, normal people who don't do this for a living, yeah, they don't care about any of this. The number of times I have people who are like, yeah, but like, why isn't Batman in any of the Spider-Man movies? And I'm like... Oh, um, okay. That's, uh, uh, very... <laughs> I don't, um, so, <laughs> the year is 1937, and, um, you know what I mean? Like, there's, the majority of people who don't watch yeah. an hour-long nerd news show every day, <laughs> Yeah. they don't, they don't know the difference. They don't know what, what's a sequel to what, and, uh, so, like, honestly, this is, when, when you mess up your continuity, 
it just gets confusing for the people who aren't going to pay attention to everything. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm going to watch all of it, DC. I'm going to, I'm going to watch every episode of every TV show you put out. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep watching all of it because Mm -hmm. I have a problem and I'm, I might go seek help for it at some point in my life, but not today, Satan. Um, but, but you could, you could help, you could help a brother out. Yeah. Just make this a little, a little easier. Please. Thanks. I'm just, yeah. The, the idea that Static Shock is a risky project. <sighs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Should we move on? I guess so. That's half our show, so we probably should. Yeah. <laughs> Nintendo turned down the opportunity to work with Kanye West, y'all. I um, would, too. <laughs> not, not a person I would want to work with, but that's uh, okay. Former president of Nintendo of America, uh, Reggie Phil's aim, this is from uh, IGN, revealed that he had to politely decline an offer to work with Kanye West on a video concept due to the amount of other projects that were currently in development at the company. So this is hilarious. Sure. So Kanye West apparently came up to the Nintendo booth at, at um, E3, which is a convention for video games, and um, <laughs> he just walked up and started talking to them, and he asked for a meeting with the head of Nintendo of America, and they took that meeting. So he was experimenting with a piece of video game content. He wanted reactions to it. Uh, he comes out and says, "I want to work with Nintendo." Um, <laughs> I don't think Kanye could put out any material that would be considered like Nintendo brand. Well, and I think that's what I think that's uh, when they say they politely declined it because of other projects. I'm sure that's what it was about, right? Like, yeah, Kanye West. I really like Kanye West's music. I think that Kanye West is a talented, brilliant lyricist. Yeah. He he just is. Like he writes really, really good music. Yeah. Um I just realized the RGB isn't on. How sad. <gasps> Tragic. Um, turn it on. Come on. We we have t- twenty minutes of show left. We can do it. We can do it. Boom. It's blue now. We have ten um, minutes of I show I think, left. I think Kanye West is very talented. I don't think that like if, if you told me that Kanye West and Sony or Microsoft or like were putting out a game together, I'd be like, dope. I want yeah. it. I'll play it. I'll buy it. Whatever. But, like, Nintendo. <laughs> Kanye West and Nintendo, is it's such a, like, hilarious collaborative team that I wish it had happened. Yeah. You know, like... it's They put Kanye West in Animal Crossing. Oh, I would love that. Are you kidding me? That, <laughs> that, that takes me back to, like, early pandemic when um, Elijah Wood was going to fans of the Lord of the Rings Islands in Animal Crossing and buying their turnips. Um... But see, that's the thing, like, it's so silly that, like, if, if you told me that, like, uh, Kanye West wrote the, like, theme song for a Mario game, I'd be like, yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it'd be good. Uh, it would be it would be a good song. I don't know if it would fit Mario. Probably not. <laughs> but I would and love that it existed. <laughs> that's probably why they're not working together. <laughs> um. Yeah, this was years ago, and, like, this isn't a recent thing, but I just... Oh, wait, really? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, E3 hasn't happened in... Right, that's fair. I just... I, I, I wish it had happened. What kind of a video game do you think Kanye West would want to make? Um, It would probably be some kind of, like, rise to stardom game where you are, like... Like the Kim Kardashian mobile game? Sure. Yeah. I've never played it. I don't know the concept. But yeah, yeah. And maybe they, like, name you, like, the world's first, like, self-made billionaire, but then they're like, oh, wait, actually, that's wrong. Sorry. We you're lied. You're just, like, referencing Kardashian things now. <laughs> you you brought it up. I couldn't help myself. Um, that, yeah. That's what I would imagine it would be. Like What a, if it like, was just Jesus walking? Jesus walking. Yeah, because Jesus walks. <laughs> It's a song by Kanye West. Never mind. Okay. Okay. No, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, it, I, I don't know his music at all. Sorry. Went over my head. I was like, this is a solid joke. And then. I'm sorry. <sighs> um, but yeah, if, if it, I bet you Kanye West brought in a like concept that was like centered around his life. Here's, here's the thing. I don't know that because Kanye West, he, he, he likes to think in really like abstract big ideas. He really, like, Kanye West is, like, a, like, abstract thinker. I would love if it was something, like, weird. I would love if Kanye West had pitched them, like, something truly great. And it just was a too adult for like, Nintendo. it was, like, the next, like, um, cyberpunk. Yeah, exactly. But, like, that's the kind of thing that I could see him, like, going on a, 
that he could like try and sell. Yeah. I mean, like he like he probably has so much money he can really like choose wh- how he spends his time. And maybe he like thought he came up with this like brilliant video game idea. Well, and look, here's the thing. I I I know people have their feelings about Kanye West and I totally get it. But what I will say about the man is that he is he is very fully committed to everything that he tries to take on. Okay, and yeah, that's fair. So when he does something, he goes all in on it. Mm-hmm. And he genuinely does well at most of it. Like, he started a sneaker line. It's one of the most popular sneaker lines in the world. He yeah. started a clothing line. It's one of the most popular, like, expensive clothing lines. He's making millions of dollars off it. Like, yeah. he doesn't half-ass anything. Yeah. And so... This is funny to me, not because I'm like, Kanye West couldn't make a video game. I 100% believe that Kanye West could make a dope video game. I just don't think that it should be with Nintendo. Nintendo. That's the part that is hilarious to me. Like, yeah, why, that's why it's funny. Why Why did he choose to go to Nintendo? I think he shopped like, it around to everyone. I think he, because they said that he was like, sh- it was a thing, something that he was going around getting reactions to. <clears throat> so I think that he was literally going up to everyone being like, <laughs> it's a me, a Kanye. <laughs> And Nintendo was like, we'll take that meeting. We'll take that meeting. I mean, here's the thing. Like, I would take the meeting. Oh, 100%. But, like, but yeah, I'm not surprised that they turned it down. Like, Yeah, I just think it's so funny. I want to know now. I want to know what the game is. Oh, me too. I'm, I'm going to reach out to Kanye and ask. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we're good Sounds friends. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just, like, call him up on my phone. Uh, Y'all, Dragon Quest. Do you guys play Dragon Quest? It's a game that I have not touched in a long time. But people are playing it to this day. There are speedrunners who have been trying to figure out how to beat the game as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. And um, Japanese speedrunners have discovered a new glitch to get their builds, uh, to get their runs under an hour, which was uh, previously every run was an hour. Like, it was hard to get under that. Mm-hmm. But now they've discovered that um, by following a series of steps that include saving the game and quickly toggling the Famicom's power switch while holding its reset button... The game will restart in a glitch state that, if exploited correctly, will max out the party's stats. Part of this involves... So, what you have to do is you have to crank up the system's temperature, which is usually 50 degrees Celsius or 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, You have to crank it up to 80 degrees Celsius. And so, people have been, like, literally using heating pads to heat up their consoles in order to give them a better shot at hitting this glitch. Um, And with this glitch, uh, uh, Japanese player Hitchi has managed to get his time from over an hour to 22 minutes and 22 seconds. (laughs) What? (laughs) By (laughs) by heating up his console. What? No word Why? yet on um, how long his console is going to continue to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the heck? That is wild. Yeah. Why would you do like that? Seems so risky. Well, because now people know that Hitchy has the best Dragon Quest time. He did the thing. Yeah. Um. They. They. The. Uh, it looks like they're. The. the they're using hot plates. Like, literal, like, a hot plate that you would, like, cook food on and ice packs to control, to to raise and lower the temperature of their console in order to hit the right temperature to get this glitch. Okay, but who discovered that? You know what? That's a good question. Who, who, who thought, hey, I'm just gonna bake my console and see... If holding down this series of buttons mm-hmm. does something. Like, should we should we do a Nerdy Nightly Bakes a PS5? No. <laughs> but we actually just put a PS5 in the oven? No. We would absolutely never do that. It, like, if we managed to get our hands on a PS5, that thing would be treated like a fucking god. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would dust it every day. I'd just be, like, rubbing. I would, like, you know... <sighs> I, like, how, I want to know who was the first person who discovered this, and I need to know how they did it. You know what? I need to know. We're not going to know. <laughs> that is wild. What how how Dragon far? Dragon Quest 3? Yeah, Dragon Quest 3. How far would you go to be famous in a very small niche community? <laughs> I, 
I've never been a speedrunner. I I don't I don't have the reflexes for it. Um, oh, sorry, what console is this? The Famicom. I don't even know what that is. Nah, I don't know either. I think it's a Japanese console. Wow. I might be wrong, but yeah. Um, Rockmage says when you have an infinite amount of monkeys, you and PS Five. Yeah, I, I, just... I can't. We want one, and we can't get one. Yeah, we we would love a PS Five, but. Uh... I think what happened was, you know what I think? I, I think they realized it after they played for so long. They, they realized after playing for so long that the console heated up naturally. Like, I'm sure they were just like... 80 degrees? Well, but like, our computer gets over 80 degrees. Easily. Our computer our computer is over 80 degrees most days with how much we game on it. No, I'm, the cooling in our computer is not bad. Babe, have you ever put your foot behind the computer while playing Cyberpunk? Yeah, that's the hot air that's coming out of it, not the actual internal temperatures of it. Uh, yeah, that's fair. I wonder, actually, I wonder how hot our computer got playing Cyberpunk. Yeah, we could look that up. Because it was okay. definitely hotter than anything else. Yeah. Yeah, definitely Cyberpunk is was the hardest on the computer. Yeah, I don't know, y'all. I, I just can't imagine, like, buying a console and being like, you I'm know gonna what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it on a hot plate. I'm going to put it on a hot plate. And then if I'm worried it's getting too hot, because, like, it's, it's got to be made out of plastic, right? It's an old console, so I'm assuming it would melt. Do they just have these, like, partially melted? I don't know. I don't, like, I am so thoroughly confused. Also, how does the temperature of the console affect like a glit like i just i that it goes over my head i don't understand you know what i that that i also don't know i think it might have something to do with when it's at a certain temperature the the the, the <laughs> system like either turns off or turns on it gets a fever it's like a faster. human faster <laughs> yeah it, it must it must have to do with like how power you you might be like creating a small short circuit or something like that within the system by having it at a certain temperature. Yeah. Because the glitch also involves, like, turning it off and on the system in a certain way. So I'm assuming that it has to do with, like, the... The, um... When, when it's at a certain temperature, the buttons and, like, the connections operate in a slightly warped way, so they're faster or something like that. Who the hell figured this out? Uh, Hit she did. Oh, he's a first one to, to do as it. As far as we know. I mean, someone else might have, but he's the one getting the credit for it. So, Hitchy, congratulations. There's a bunch of Americans talking about you. Yep. University in me and Voodoo calling me to see the bee. You nailed it. Roddy TV. I don't know why I read that, but wow, my brain's broke to did. That is wild. I, um... A Richardson says, I, says, I can only assume process. some sort of electrical engineer. It's probably like a 12-year-old kid. <laughs> yeah. If I'm being completely honest. Could you imagine? I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I could definitely see that. It's 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 just whoever's gonna time. go on to be Iron Man. Yeah. Um <laughs> Literally. What's up, muddles? Y'all, we're getting to the end of the show here. This was a weird one. Yeah. We talked about Kanye and Nintendo. We talked about people using hot plates on their devices. I got upset with Warner Brothers for saying that Richardson that oh my god, I'm reading. Yeah. I got upset with Warner Brothers for saying that Static Shock is a risky character. I mean, yeah, that that's kind of dumb. Not about it, Warner Brothers. But, you know, Warner Brothers, we're, we're losing faith. Static Shock is so cool. We are losing Just faith. Just make a freaking good Static Shock movie, and I will, I will buy all the tickets. I will be there. That animated show was my childhood. Oh my god. What? Wargamester's bringing in a late-minute story here. CD Projekt Red just announced free DLC for Cyberpunk 2077? Jeez. What? Let me pull this up real quick, because I just want to see if that's... Breaking news, y'all. <laughs> Stuff is happening. Yeah, J J uh, Jay Carter, I, uh, I definitely feel that. Um, it's wild what kids can do with technology nowadays. <laughs> That is so interesting. Weird, I can't find anything about that war game, sir. Why don't you try Cyberpunk DLC? See if it comes up. Guys, the news is happening right now. Oh, it is. Why? Here's the thing. Is the DLC fixing the game? 
<laughs> yeah, can we get the game to work properly first? Uh, y'all, we would like to announce our first downloadable content for Cyberpunk 2077. It is a functioning game that you can play on your system as purchased. Um, Congratulations. Wow, yeah, January. That's so soon. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised. Also... Yeah, or, or January or early 2021. Okay. Here's the thing. <clears throat> you sent me the link. Thank you. I, I found a Wargame, sir. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Um, I Now that I've played the end of the game, not really sure how DLC is going to work in this one. Mm. It'd have to be like a totally different side. Or thing. it would have to take place before the final mission. Yeah. Because, and, and no spoilers. This isn't a spoiler saying what happens at the end of the game. Yeah. It's just that there are so many different endings... And not all of, like, the, the, and they're drastically different. They're not similar. They, like, you end up in wildly different places. Mm -hmm. I don't really understand. Like, so the, the DLC would have to either be, like, a separate mode. And maybe it is the multiplayer that they've been talking about. Mm -hmm. but it, Or it would have to be, like, in-world story stuff that takes place before you make your decisions in the final mission. Yeah. Um, and I hope that that's not too spoilery, but like, there isn't no, like a, fine. there isn't really a way to, <clears throat> there isn't a way for the game to be like, and then the next thing that your character does, because depending on what you choose in the final mission, your character is in one Very of different scenarios. There's two different endings within the ending that I chose. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So it's just, I don't really, I don't know how this is going to work. And I'm very, very curious. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, I'm very curious hmm. how that's gonna work. Yeah, but I'm yeah, but it's... like the fact that it's free is cool. Yeah, that's nice of them, I guess. Um, yeah. Interesting. Well, gonna have to get back on that. Yeah, we. Uh, what, what, as soon as we know more After about that, Hades has claimed my soul. Here's the thing: if Cyberpunk 2077 um, has DLC coming out in January, we're going to get a trailer for it, or like some they're like they're gonna have to announce that within the next. Two weeks. Yeah. Because in two weeks we'll be halfway into January. In January. So, I know, I know, I know. This year, what happened? <sighs> what a decade it's been. It, yeah, mm-hmm. Y'all, I think that's the end of the show. Uh, thank you, Wargames, for, for bringing in that breaking news here at the end. That was yeah. wild. That was crazy. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's I'm uh, really I'm ready for more cyberpunk. I know you are. I know, look, I guys, I know, I know, I know, but, like, I love it. It's such a fun <laughs> game. I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I know I said that in my review over on the YouTube, but um, it's a good game, and I really like it. And I started my second character already, um, off stream, and I'm having fun. Uh, anything else you want to plug today? Um, no, tomorrow is my last stream of 2020. Wild. Wild. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, come join me um, tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, I've got um, I've got some goals. We're 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 a few subs away from our cyberpunk makeup goal. Um, I had I had a few other goals, but we are very far away from that. So that's not gonna be that's not gonna happen this month. But maybe we'll try doing that again at a later date. Um, and then yeah, we are doing our New Year's Eve stream on Thursday, starting that's right. at eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, there's going to be a little bit twi of Twitch Sings. We're going to ring in the new year. It's going to be super chill. It's just like a really fun time. So I hope to see you guys there. Yeah. I'm very excited to do one last Twitch Sings with you. Yep. Yep. And Before it goes away. To drink champagne. And, uh, catching up Clarus. Catching up Clarus. Coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'm very excited for that as well. Y'all, uh, I'm going to be playing Hades later today. We are, we've made it to the third boss. So like we're, we're, we're moving, we're shaking. I'm very excited to keep on going with that. I love this game. Very excited. I honestly am so sad that you're streaming today because I just want to play Hades. <laughs> it's all I want to do. Um, maybe we will end up buying it for the Switch. Um, just so we can both play at the same time. <laughs> just sit next to each other, both playing Hades. On stream. <laughs> we could do a co-op stream with both of the Hadeses. Both of the Hades. Both of the Hadeses, um, playing at the same time. Um, oh God, I love it. Y'all, uh, please, if you can, go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. It would mean a lot. Uh, we're trying to build our audience over there, and it means a lot that we have had so many people come and join the team over on the YouTube. But for now, we're gonna end the show the way that we always do by saying. 
<laughs> My name's David Webb. I'm Ariel Edwards. Do something nerdy tonight. Bye. Bye-bye.